Hey folks, welcome to part 36 of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue building out the location tab here at the moment. We've got this spinner that just spins forever and is not really doing much. So drop a like down below as per usual. Say hello in the comments. Subscribe if you still haven't for whatever reason and let's continue. So where we guys had left off or well, where all of us guys have left off guys and gals, what we want to do is we want to continue building out the view model as well as hook up our view for this location tab to actually show us cells. So before we jump into the view model and use the models we get back to derive view models, what we want to do in the location view is configure our table view a little bit. So we will do that in another dedicated function and I'll write out, call it configure table. And what those configuration things are that we want to do is we want to say delegate is self as well as data source is self. So we're going to specify that this view itself will supply the data and handle interactions for this table view sub view. I'm going to come into the bottom here and we'll conform to the appropriate protocols. And I'll do my best to actually keep these separate. So we'll have the delegate up there and then we'll have the data source down here. So for the delegate, the only thing we want to do is handle interaction on a cell. So there is a function called uh, table view did select uh, item at index path or row at index path, I should say. And the first thing we'll want to do in here is just deselect it and notify controller of selection. So we'll leave that put for the time being. Here we'll have number of sections. We're always going to have one section inside of the locations tab. For number of items in section, we'll want to return, you know, something that's based on our view models. We'll return 20 for now, something random. And for cell for road index path, we'll want to actually DQ the appropriate cell. I'll say that this is a standard cell at the moment since we've only uh, registered the base cell here. So an identifier of cell index path. I'm going to return cell here and for now we'll just stick some text in here just so we can see something. So let's say text label dot text and let's say hello Rick and Morty. Awesome. Go ahead and build for me. Give it a run and let's see if those actually do show up. They probably won't because we've never notified, uh, we've never configured our actual uh, view model here. So if you recall, we get rid of the spinner once we assign this view model. So let's actually do that. So back in our location controller, we want to say at the bottom of view did load view model dot fetch locations. And we also want to specify a delegate on this view model so it can notify uh, us being the controller that, hey, I'm actually done fetching locations. So let's create a protocol up here, otherwise known as an interface. And it's going to be a the name of the class of so the view model delegates. Once again, any object, and we'll have a single function, did fetch initial locations. And inside of this class, we'll hang on to a reference of it, make sure it's a weak reference so we don't cause a memory leak. And once we have successfully fetched the locations, what we'll want to do is say self.delegate notify that we fetched those locations. And we also don't want to cause a memory leak here. So we will actually capture self in a weak capacity. Now, before you go ahead and give this a run, you'll notice that we stuck a string in here, right? This is the response that we expect to get and decode to. Well, that response is totally wrong. Obviously, it's a string and we want the appropriate response. So let's open up the models folder, go to API response types, and we can actually just copy and paste one of these. And let's create a new file. This will be a Swift file, rm get locations, and see how the other ones are named, get locations response. Paste that in here and just change this to rm get all locations. The type of the result will be rm location, which is the respective model. And then info will basically be the exact same thing. I'm kind of going off of the fact that I hope this API is consistent, but we'll see if it actually fills in a moment. Let's once again open up our view model folder and let's go to our location here. And what we want to decode now the JSON to is that response. I'm going to line break this so we have a little more uh, improved uh, readability here. 
we will want to hang on to the model that we do get. So this will give us a, a piece of info back. So we're gonna say that the API info, so here I'll actually say that the type will be API info, the name and the type will be the rm get uh, all locations response dot info and then it will be optional. So we'll say API info is model dot info like so self dot uh, cell view models. We don't want to assign that directly. What we want to actually assign is locations. So we'll say locations is model dot results. And then we notify the, our delegate, um, aka the controller in this case, that hey, we have gone and fetched the initial batch of uh, locations. We also want to do that on the main queue. So here I am going to say dispatch queue dot main async. And the reason to do that is our controller is going to make view changes and that needs to be on the main thread. So awesome. Let's come back to the controller here. If we try to build, it's probably going to yell at me because I'm not conforming in here to the uh, delegate, even though we have said that we are the appropriate uh, we are the delegate in the location controller, so it actually gives me an error in here. So let's come down here. I'm gonna add a mark and say this is location view model delegate. And it is did fetch, or let's see what the heck I called it, something like did fetch initial locations. I can't actually remember, so I'm gonna jump into here and see what the heck I called the function. All right, so we called it did fetch initial locations come down here and actually bring it in. And the reason it's actually not showing up is because I, in a silly uh, brain fart, forgot to actually conform to it up here. So usually Xcode is, well, I'll say Xcode is right half the time if it ever gives you a strange error. Um, cool, so now that we're conforming to that in here, what we wanna do is when this function is called, we're gonna say our primary view go and configure yourself with the view model, which is in the global scope of this controller. Go ahead and give it a build and run, and let's see what happens. So we'll come into here, we see the spinner, and in a pretty nice animation, it fades in our table view with a bunch of these cells. We hard-coded how many cells with Rick and Morty text showing up. Awesome. So we don't wanna actually use this base cell. What I prefer to do is use a custom cell, obviously, so we can show the relevant pieces of information. When we tap on it, we also want something to happen. So let's do that one by one. So first, let's create a view in our views folder. I'm gonna open this up in location. We will create a new class. This is going to be a UI table view cell rather than collection view cell. And this will be a RM location table view cell, just like that create and save it. And let's see, we're just gonna delete all the stuff that it gives us because we're smart and we're gonna build it out ourselves. So we want a identifier on here, just like a collection view. There's a lot of similarities you'll see uh, if you're not familiar with uh, table views. There is a difference here. We're gonna use this initializer override rather than init with frame. There is a slight discrepancy with collection views in that case. We still want the init with coder. It is required and put a fatal error in there. We will want to prepare this for reuse as well if the cell is dequeued. And of course, we will want a view model to configure this particular view. I realize we have not created this yet, but presumably the name of it will be the name of the view plus a view model like so. And for the sake of seeing something, let's at least set a background color. Let's come back into our view model folder and we can create, let me create a folder called locations. And I'll drag in the location view model and inside of here, we'll create the view model for the cell. Alrighty, we've got this in here. Now this view model for the cell, we'll just create it for now. And if you think about it logically, we're gonna want some strings in here perhaps, because we wanna show whatever a location has, right? So coming back to our API, it has type, uh, name, and dimension. Not a whole lot of data, um, but we can you know, tap into it and perhaps then we wanna show which characters are residents there. You can also get pretty wild and like include these in the same cell itself but we won't do that since it gets a little crazy and it frankly doesn't look that nice in my opinion, but I digress. So now that we have this view model here, 
uh, back in the actual uh, view model for the location uh, view itself, we will have instead of cell view models in array of string, it'll be an array of our cell types view models. And every time that we assign to location, just like we've done for characters, we are going to loop over location. So for location and locations, and we want to create a cell view model. And I'll just create it like this for now. Uh, and not a cell, we want the view model. Make sure your type is appropriate. And we'll stick it in view models. So I'll say view mo cell view models dot append cell view model. So that's essentially how that's going to work. We will want to dedupe, basically filter out the view models that are already in there. Let me see why this is yelling at me. All right, this is private var, cell view models. Looks like this type is indeed correct. Looks like this won't let me actually go and append into it because there is no append on it. Uh, let's see why that is. Ah, it's because I actually use the same type. This is cell view models, plural. So good deal. So now that we've got that all set up in here, let's see what else we want to do. So we're notifying via the delegate, hey, you can go and refresh your, uh, you know, you can go ahead and refresh the view. So let's jump back into the view. And I realize we're jumping back and forth quite a bit. So I apologize if it's a little all over the place, but project is getting a little bigger now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll change the type of cell that's registered and the appropriate cell ID down in the place we are dequeuing this we not only want to dequeue the appropriate kind of cell but we also want to cast to it so this will be that cell identifier we will cast to it and we are going to unwrap it so it's non-optional and then fatal error out in case it is i'll drop the assignment there and let's see for number of cells we're going to use our view model and we're going to say cell view models dot count, otherwise it'll be zero. And this is actually optional for uh, bringing in this function for number of sections. So I'm actually just gonna get rid of it. So let's try to build, let's see what happens. It looks like cell view model is inaccessible because I think I stuck a private on there. So it's yelling at me. So I'm gonna go and make this public and make this private set, meaning only this class has the authority to assign to it. So let's come into here. And we should see a bunch of red cells, which in fact we do. That means we are fetching data and we are actually getting it to show up. So let's let's do something simple before wrapping up this video. We want to actually use the location to create the view model here. So I will stick in here in it with location. And this will be a RM location. I'll hang on to the location by saying self.location is location. And essentially what we'll want in here is uh, three computed properties. So these will be the name, which will basically just be return location dot name. And you can actually copy and just paste these a total of uh, three times and just tweak the names here. So this one at the top was name. The next one will be, I think type is one of them. All right, type, make sure they're non-optional. I believe they are. And then this one is dimension. And this here will be dimension. So cool, so it's yelling at me because we need to actually pass in location when we uh, instantiate this. So location will be location from our for loop. But again, we wanna filter, we, we don't wanna append to the cell view models if it already contains uh, the view model that we've created. So we'll say if cell view models contains cell view model, singular, let me fix that. If it doesn't already contain it, then we want to append it. But if you try to build this, it'll actually yell at you. And the reason it's yelling at you is uh, basically it's saying that I don't know how to check if a single view model is unique or not, right? I don't know how to check if it is contained. And to fix this, we've done it before. We are going to add both hashable and equatable. And that allows Swift to go and say, hey, like what is how do I equate two of these objects? And we'll want to bring in the equation uh, function here as well as the hash into hasher function. So I'm gonna actually move these down. We'll move it at the bottom here. For hasher, uh, hash into hasher, we'll say hasher.combine and I'll do the name here. I will copy and paste this. 
We'll also do location.id. That's actually the only one you really need in theory because IDs all should be unique, but I'll just show you guys a few different examples. You can basically combine all these components to compute a unique hash. And then to equate, we're gonna say, does the left item dot hash value equal equal the right item dot hash value. And if you wanna do this in a little bit of a different way, you can actually just leverage the IDs as well. And that'll actually compile. You should be able to build and run. And where we will leave off is I wanna get something to show up instead of this obnoxious red cell. Um, so what I'll do is I will actually get rid of the color in here uh, from red and we'll go and make it system uh, primary background or secondary, oh, let's do primary, why not? Let's see what that looks like. And then back where we dequeue the cell, instead of not doing anything, what I will do is I'll say cell dot uh, text label dot text, and we'll just assign this to maybe uh, the view model that we have at that given position. So let's say guard let cell view models will be the view model for this view, dot cell view model, if we don't have it, we'll fatal error out because we should never come into here because if we don't have a view model, we have zero cells. And once we have it, we can actually say that this is the cell view model singular at the given position. And let me just assign the name so we can see the name pop up. So this has a name on it. Go ahead and build and run. When I come into here, we should see locations. Awesome. We actually do. We have Earth. We have a bunch of other ones. We have Citadel of Rigs. We have uh, World Enders Layer. We have Anatomy Park. And we obviously need to build a pagination for this. It's going to be different than how the collection view handles it. But I digress. We have something showing up. It's not really looking the nicest, but better than having nothing. So this is where we'll pause this video. Drop a like before clicking away. Let me know in the comments if you had any issues. Once again, let me be a good developer and CD into our actual project. We'll stage everything. I'll commit it and say, uh, continue building location tab and I will push. So in a real world scenario, you probably want different branches, feature branches for all this stuff and you would open pull requests, but since we're just continuously building, I'm just gonna push to the main branch. But that's all I've got. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next part.